Dylan back with Joe at the Understanding of the Times conference live stream. We get to access some of the speakers and some of the extras behind the scenes today. And right now we have a special opportunity to hear from Amir, who you just heard from on the platform, as well as Jan Markella herself. So I hope you'll stick with us and join us for this part of the conference today. Jan and Amir, thanks for joining us. Hi, Thank you. Pleasure. Well, I heard a little bit about it on stage today, but tell us as we start a little bit about the connection between the two of you, how God brought the two of you together to minister in these last days? Well, that's a good question. Um, I started hearing about Amir probably in about 2014 and accessed some online teachings, very solid. And I just threw it out and said, Lord, let me, what would your will be to have him come in 2015 to our event here, which he graciously accepted. And that's how we kind of got acquainted. And you know, I'm a part of the generation that caught on to the things we're talking about through Hal Lindsey's book, Late Great Planet Earth. Yes. And there was great enthusiasm back then. And then I saw the enthusiasm start to wane. And then some guys like Amir, like J.D. Farag, like Jack Hibbs started coming along some, I don't know when, I can't put a date on it, but I saw this interest start to accelerate again. I remember it, it had dipped between, oh, I don't know, somewhere maybe in the mid-80s until maybe 10 years ago. It just took a real, it really went downhill. And so I'm so grateful that men like Amir and others, and they're reaching a younger audience, yes. and that is so important. Yes, it's really a global audience. You're there in Israel, but you're literally all over the world with Behold Israel, and some of the updates you have online are fabulous. But tell us what it was like for you to connect with Jan in those early days, and, and what ministry partnership God's put together. Yeah. Well, um, honestly, I, I, I never heard of Jan Markell before, but I never heard of most Bible prophecy yes. teachers before, um, because I was more into the niche of, of the churches whom I guided in Israel that invited me to speak in their uh, home church uh, wherever they were. Okay. Um, so uh, one day, uh, Pastor Jack Cape says, uh, uh, Amir, I, I know uh, the uh, modern day Deborah, uh, Je no, Jan Marikel, yes. and he says uh, she's hosting every year the most, uh, uh, the largest prophecy conference in the U.S. and many probably maybe even around the world because to think about the, the shrinking interest in Bible prophecy yes. all over the world, that right. makes it probably the largest gathering of, of yes. people who are interested in that one. And he says, I told her about you and she might invite you to our, the next conference. And honestly, I came here, I was so scared. <laughs> that, that year, I never for, uh, forgot that. Um, I, I spoke once, it was towards the end. And I was nervous wrecked the whole time. I didn't even know if I can sit there in the green room, go out there, go. I didn't even know how to handle myself because it was so big. And, and you know, those conferences are growing bigger and bigger. T the next year, sure. you had a record number yeah. here. Of we had 6,200 6, in a yeah. venue that, that f facilitates 4,300. We had 6,200. Wow. Everything from the parking lot to even the freeways trying to get mm. here were overcrowded. Yeah. Really? So instead of getting used to it, I got <laughs> even more scared. Right. You know? And now the next year, the here I am, on, right? and the next year I was asked to speak twice. Yeah. And it was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do now? Uh, but I, I, it became like the one, the one event I don't want to miss. I, yes. I, I'm saying no to most invitations because I can't, you know, yeah. I can't. But that's the one thing that I make sure that I put it on my calendar. Uh, a, I, because I so love and appreciate what she has been doing. What Jan has been doing is something that has not been seen in decades in this country. But more so also the reach of this ministry, yeah, of yes, Olive Tree yes. Ministries, the reach. Look, I've been traveling all around the world. Everywhere I go, they tell me that they heard about me either from Jan Markell or from Jack Hibbs or from mm -hmm. J.D. Farag. Uh, seldom it is through me that they heard about the others. Oh, really? It is more, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I, I guess I'm the new guy in the block and I, right. I, I don't pastor a church, so, you know, I, I don't have that, unfortunately, that platform. But on the other hand, I know myself, I could never pastor a church. Uh -huh. I always tell people if I was a pastor, probably I would pastor uh, in, in jail. Uh, 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 that ministry because I would be sitting in jail for killing someone <laughs> in the church that I pastor. I said, no, my point is, I don't have that uh, gift of pastoring, which yes. is a gift, but I do know that God uh, allowed me to teach 
the word and uh, I try to do it as, as, as faithfully as I can. Yes. And this is a, an opportunity that you don't say no to. Yes, I, I, sure. I know a lot of people that they wish that Jan Markell invited them exactly. to, the, to yes. that conference. And, and so whenever I get the invitation, I'm grateful, but not taking it for granted. I'm like, okay, uh, they're not tired of me yet. Right. No. Well, it was very well received. A standing ovation at the oh, end. People absolutely. were just taking that in and just so excited to see what yeah. God's doing through you and your ministry in this event. And I know that they were telling us earlier there are more people watching via live stream at times yes. than there are in the room. Oh, so and it's amazing to see the yeah. reaches this mm -hmm. having, even live, not yeah. only today and then the yeah. months to come, but even as we're speaking today. But it shows the importance of these kind of conferences. And you're probably the best to speak to this about the importance of this kind of event and what it does in bringing people together to talk about the importance of the end times. Well, actually, I, I'm teaching this afternoon, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Um, because the most frequent email my ministry gets, J.D. Farag says the same thing, Jack Hibbs says the same thing, is I've been to every church in my town that's a candidate for me to go to. I mm -hmm. mean, they're not going to the Mormon Tabernacle, but every church in town, they're not touching anything that's relevant. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not talking about God's chosen people. They're not talking about birth pangs and how they're intensifying. They're not talking about signs of the times. They're not making people ready for the, to get ready for, for the king to be coming. They have to travel across country to find like-minded fellowship. And so that's what we hope, is that we can connect people here, maybe for life, for, as friends, who knows. Maybe we don't have much time, maybe the Lord's coming today, but if not, these people need a connection. They need someone they, could, they can email, they can say, I need a good word today. Hebrews 10 says we're to encourage one another. Yes. And that's what I am all about, that's what he's all about, that's what I think Jack and JD are all about is encouraging one another. There are things to be encouraged about. There really are. Um, but our churches aren't very encouraging. Our churches are a little depressing. Not all of them. Thank God there are some holding to truth. But our churches are failing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the same in our situation. We hear from people over and over sure. again. Our church never teaches on Bible prophecy. If they mm -hmm. do, they only touch on the surface of it. I want to know more. So it makes a resource like this event or your ministry or Behold Israel and others so vital to helping people understand that 25 to 30 percent of the Bible that's prophecy. Are you seeing this as well worldwide or is oh, it yeah. just in I our country? It, I see it worldwide. In fact, look, America uh, is the spearhead of Christianity for many, many years, not only in teaching and spreading the word and doing crusades and having lots of people say it, but also spreading the word around the world. And so can you imagine if in America teachers of prophecy are a rare breed, how much more they are mm -hmm. around yes. the world? Mm, when, when, when you hardly have Christianity be, being in such presence as it is here. Look, I've been all over Australia and New Zealand. I've been all over Europe. I've been in many places uh, in Mexico and in Canada. And Listen, the churches are dead. Yeah. I don't have any other word, but they're yes. dead. People don't go to church because they want That's to right. study the Word of God because they're excited about the return. Look, it, but there are some glimpses of, um, yes. of hope. For There's example, that remnant. Yes. a yes. friend of mine, right. a friend of mine, went to a, a small Baptist church in Treviso, Italy, mm. and he said to the pastor, "Would you be interested in having a friend of mine from Israel teach?" And so the pastor says, "What does he believe?" Uh, and he says, uh, and my friend says, well, he, he believes in uh, the rapture of the church. So we do. So do we. And then he says, <laughs> when does he believe that the rapture is going to happen? Uh, and then he says, he believes it's going to be before the tribulation. So do we. Mm -hmm. And he said, have him come over. Okay. And, he, and it's like, you could tell that that church is so different from the rest of the churches, not only in the town, but also all across Italy yes. and across Europe. Mm -hmm. And when they hear that someone is teaching of those things... They want him to come. Yes. They want to, and I saw that in Romania. Romania, you know, there's so many churches, but they're all so religious that mm. they're so much into are you saved or not saved, whether you cover your head or not, or speaking in tongues or not. Mm. Yeah. But they don't teach what the word says about what is happening around the world and what is next. And and that's why to me to end up today's message with Romans 13 exhortation of how, in light of this, we should be. It's so important because only when you understand where we are, mm. 
you are being driven to life of holiness and literally expectation and awaiting for us to be out of here. And I want to tell you something. If you really think about it, we're preaching a very weird thing to the world. <laughs> I mean, think about it. The world is looking at us as people who are telling the world that at some point we will be out of here uh, from this world, you know, physically. It's strange for them. But yet the same people would have no problems talking about aliens, no problem mm -hmm. talking about, uh, you know, yeah. uh, UFOs. Oh, sure. They have no problem uh, of so many... Everything else is great. Most of them will watch uh, science fiction and be great. Uh, but when it comes to what the Bible says that so far is all being tested as so accurate, yes. so, so uh, precise, and of course, you know, reliable and authentic, oh no, that's yeah. too much. We, science fiction is for us to watch on TV. Science fiction is for us to read on our comics book. But when it comes to church, just give us fluff. Yeah. Make us feel good feel about good. this world. We, we're not really into anything yeah. next. Uh, that's an excellent point yeah. because you talk about that. The, this world is not our home. No. But we've gotten to this best life now well, idea. Some of that, and some that's of these not, prosperity that's preachers. That's not the way it's meant to yeah. be. This yeah. is not our home. Yeah, so well, right. Joel Osteen will tell us we can <laughs> mm -hmm. have our best life now, and a lot of people, because it's comfortable, they follow that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, unfortunately, that's not what happened with the apostles, and obviously that's not right. with Jesus, yeah. and we shouldn't expect that today I'm either. It's not about, going to be easy. It's I mean, going think, to be challenging. I'm thinking yeah. about every one of the apostles of the first century would be mocked today yes. by the church. Yes. yes. By the church! That's sad, but true. <laughs> By the church, everything that Paul said to the Thessalonians would be mocked and ridiculed, not, forget about the world, most of the church. And you know what their remedy for this situation is? Let's not teach about the rapture, but only about the return of Christ. Mm -hmm. See, this way we do talk about Him coming back. But we, we don't talk about us going to be with Him, we just talk about Him coming to be with us. Right. And because that's easier to digest. You see, and that's when they mess the people mind to think that the rapture and the second coming are the same thing yes. that to think that they actually the second coming is uh, you know is the whole I mean everything the church should be waiting for right. you know, interesting the church should not be waiting for the first second coming of Jesus the church sh will be with Jesus yeah, in his second coming yes. you don't have to wait for it right. and all every pastor that is talking about we have to wait for his second coming we have to be ready for Jesus's return to earth what a wrong thing to preach yeah. And it's so important because a lot of what happens during that tribulation period is what God does in the lives of the people of Israel, the Jewish people. Exactly. And yet that is often the, overlooked. Exactly. The only nation that should be expecting, hoping, praying for the second coming of Jesus right. is Israel. Yes. Not the believers. And look at Jeremiah, Israeli, Jewish, but a believer. Mm -hmm. I have to choose. Okay. And it's evident as a believer, no more there is a Jew or a Gentile. Now as a believer... I'm waiting for the rapture. Yeah, That's my thing. That's my hope. This is the blessed hope I have. The appearance of the Lord, not on earth. He's not going to appear on earth. When He comes, it's not appearing. Trust me, yes. every eye will see. It's His appearing up there in the cloud for us to come and to reunite with Him. And then the Bible says He will take us to be with where He is, not where yes. we are. I mean, they take those words from John chapter 14 and, and they completely circumcise them to the point that nobody understands who comes first, who goes first, who mm -hmm. goes where, and all that. And that's all they want. Just, you know, fairy tale of, of, of just like Santa will come, Jesus mm -hmm. will come, everything right. will be great. They don't understand that the rapture and then that what follows the rapture. Look, why are we taken out? Not for a reason. Yes. We're taken out because the, the tribulation is about yeah, to come. Right. So they don't prepare you for the tribulation if they don't prepare you for the rapture. You see, one thing after the other, they put the world to sleep so nobody will be ready. Yes. And That's I think right. ministries like right. like Olive Tree and like what we have are ministries that are aimed to to wake up. Yes. Oh, well, maybe we can talk about that a little bit, this idea of Israel. Somehow in our culture it's become controversial to stand with the land where Jesus walked. And suddenly uh, people are talking about how we should be part of boycotting Israel or 
are divesting from Israel in some way, and yet this is the one land where Scripture talks about there is so much future blessing to come, and we're to support. There's no expiration date on what God said to right. Abraham long ago. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. Maybe either of you can chime in in terms of the role of Israel in the end times and how we can practically do something about that today. Um, you want to talk about that in my message this <laughs> afternoon? I think yes. you're not a Maybe psychic, Maybe give us a sneak, you? Piece of, <laughs> a sneak peek of it, yeah. Um, Here's a little, I don't know who wrote this, um, how odd of God to choose the Jews, but not as odd as those who choose the Jewish God and spurn the Jews. The church mm. is spurning the Jews. The church, the church yes. is spurning the Jews. And what a blessing they would have if they would do the, just the opposite, you know, bless the Jews. Genesis 12:3. Um, I think it's um, a subtle scheme of Satan, I do. It's a subtle scheme of Satan to get everybody's eyes either off of Israel and the Jews or paint them in a terrible light. So we have to persecute them, the pogroms, the holocaust, etc. Get, get rid of them. But we're either going to ignore them or exterminate them. And this has been Satan's plan for millennia. Yes. And the church is now going along. Boycott, divest, sanction, that's a church issue. Yes. Um, I've got a picture of, well, I'm going to show it this afternoon, of uh, the Presbyterian Church, I believe it's USA, standing with Ilhan Omar. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. sorry, I'm Ilhan sure Omar, she's from Minnesota. She I'm from Minnesota. Yes. She, she's recruiting terrorists, uh, but, but the Presbyterian Church stands with Ilhan Omar. Mm -hmm. So this is the church today and it's one of the reasons the church isn't being blessed yes how can god bless this that's a good way we to can. put it it's an issue of blessing i mean yeah. it's to our benefit if we bless israel it's not just something that's right to do it's yeah. beneficial to do as well and it has nothing to do with israel it has to do with the god of israel yes you that's see a good point Excellent. the way god tests the nations is by let me see how they treat my people mm. and and it's not because his people are great are perfect uh right. you know israel has never been perfect uh, you know, as a Jew, as an Israeli, I can tell you, we're still not perfect. Yes. And nowhere in the Bible it says, when the Jews will be perfect, I want you to love them. No. <laughs> nowhere in the Bible God mm -hmm. ever conditioned that. In fact, by the way of looking at how people treat Israel, you know where their heart is when it comes mm -hmm. to the God of Israel. And that's so important that people understand. I gave a message a couple a month ago, why should Christians support Israel? Yes. And that message, I believe it's so important because... You know, the, the, the enemy is doing two things. A, he either causes Christians, just what we said, n to ignore Israel and yes. to collaborate with those who hate Israel, or he's causing church goers to want to idolize Israel. Mm -hmm. And then they ad start adopting non-biblical views and forsaking the word. For example, they suggest that you need to keep the law in order to be mm -hmm. saved. They suggest that Israel has its own covenant with God, dual covenant. And, of course, they will uh, get to the point where they deny the deity of Christ because, mm -hmm. God forbid, the Jewish people don't accept it, so we, as well, should also uh, walk away from it. You know, the enemy is there to deceive yes. and confuse right. and, 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 and rob and kill. And that's why I started my message with it, and I will tell you even if you get away from the Word of God, you are exposed to all of the nonsense. Yes. Even a nonsense that can look nice, sound nice, and uh, flattering Israel and flattering the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. No, we don't idolize Israel. Worship God, the God of Israel, the, and, and share with them the Messiah of Israel. Right. He's well, the we have a unique ministry, though, of being in the land of Israel and being able to tour there and to bring other people to tour there. What is it about bringing someone to see the land of Israel that changes their perspective about God's people and about God's plan? You well, think? somebody told me uh, in one sentence, he said, my Bible is no longer black and white, it's now technicolor. Basically, he said, finally, I can put places, mm. I can put faces, and I could understand literally what the Bible says, but beyond that, the presence of Israel back in their land, the return of the Jews back mm -hmm. to their land, and the miracle that is called Israel. Within 70 years, we've been from, from a nation that was almost exterminated by you know, right. the European world right. uh, to a nation that is now in a status of a world power, unheard of, unprecedented, and cannot be attributed to a person, but to God. And, and we're watching it. And people understand, okay, 
it is right. Israel yes. is real. And they go back home with so much passion to mm. serve the God of Israel because the God of Israel showed them how he's faithful to his yes. promises yes. when they walked in Israel. Right. Israel, that's why the name of the ministry, Behold Israel, said, look at Israel and you understand not only who God is, but also what his plans are. Yes. And, and to me, Israel is in the number one end time sign. Amen. Mm. Number one. Number that's one. great. Absolutely. We're going to be with you in Israel in December, looking forward to the that. Lord. Yes. And excited about the opportunity to experience exactly what you're talking Wonderful. about. And the conferences like this sow seeds into those kind of opportunities for people. We're excited to be able to do that. And one of the things that comes out of a ministry like this and a conference like this, because there are people who can't attend and some who may not watch, but it's planting seeds. Your reference to Hal Lindsey's book way back in the 70s, 70s. and Dr. Martin's mm -hmm. books and others yeah, that we yeah. could talk about. Many ministries have been mm -hmm. around for years. They reaped some harvest, yeah. but they also sowed You're seeds right. so right. into people like yeah. this. And you talked about the movie yeah. Jesus yeah. that you saw mm -hmm. that was the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the turning point of my life. Turning point in your life. Did you know that David Ben Gurion read seeds. Hal Lindsey's book? Really? Yeah, that's right. He did. It's, he he was an atheist, though. He was an atheist that was fascinated by that book. And when you go to his hut in Ben Gurion hut in the Negev, you see that book on the shelf. And I also want you to know that recently we've been increasing our presence online. I'm getting tons of messages from local young Israelis. Mm. Okay, so what are you exactly? <laughs> they ask oh, me. Yes, and then that opens yes. the door. And, and even one woman wrote me, and I sent her to a local congregation. She received the Bible. Now she's, that's it. Mm. And the other thing I see is Arabs from around the Middle East dare to write me. Wow. And, they, and the first thing they write is, I'm not writing as a hate write or something. Just explain to me. And then they have their thing. Yes. But I, and then I take the time and explain, and they're, they're like friends. They, they are still following me on yes. Instagram because mm -hmm. they understand that the truth is not to be found in their country through their media. Mm. Yes. I call that media the media nights. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but uh, to, me, to me, they need... So I, I think that uh, for me, personally, not just to teach the Bible, but also to bring the, tr the news from the land of Israel, yes. but from a perspective of someone who can through the Word of God, filter all the, yes. the garbage and the deception, I think it's also uh, amazing because uh, I never dreamt to, to make any impact on local Arabs from Saudi Arabia and mm -hmm. from Yemen and, from, and even from Morocco. And one person even wrote me, where was it? Uh, Iran. Yeah, Iranians uh, write yes. me. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Iranians are not our enemies. It's the mullahs yeah, that are. Right. The Iranians exactly. actually love Israel. And uh, believe it or not, they already, out, out, they're no longer hiding it. That Their problem is yeah. their own regime. Yes. Yes. And uh, I've seen <clears throat> videos where the regime would paint an Israeli flag so the students into the university will walk on it and the students will bypass it. Oh. Just oh. saying, hey, this is not our enemy. You mm -hmm. guys are our enemy. And so we're watching... Oh, of course, I could have mentioned that in this message, but I need at yes. least another hour. But my point is, there's a wind of change, and there is an opportunity and responsibility on our show yes. to communicate that relentlessly. And, uh, and I'm telling you up front, there are days I wake up and I say, I'm done with ministry. And I'm sure it happened to mm -hmm. you more than once. Yeah. There are days where you're no, you don't have that strength to deal with so much mm -hmm. attack and persecution and the hardest thing is a persecution from within not from yes. outside mm -hmm. right yes uh, it, it's terrible yeah. it's so it's demoralizing the it's the... so if 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 i've ever wanted to give up it's because of an attack from within really yeah. yes yeah but then you know when you see the big picture and when you come to places like this and you see the right. response it just fills my cup Yes, and people yes. are hungry for truth, and it's so important to point out that God is doing his work among the Jewish people, among people in America, and among the Arab world as well, that God is bringing people to faith from all cultures and all backgrounds. We don't hear those stories enough, you know, some of those places are closed countries, 
or spear is speaking out, but God is doing something special in all parts of the world, and it's, it's fun to be part of that. But politically, things have started changing in Israel a little bit lately. You alluded to it on stage. What's the, the difference now? Because most Americans have no clue. They just know there was an election in Israel. Yeah. It didn't go well for Netanyahu. What does this mean for us? Kind of give us a brief on that. Netanyahu needed 61 members of parliament, uh, not just from his party, but from his you know, future coalition, in order to form a government. Unfortunately, he fell six short. And he's, he's leading a, a blockade of 55 Knesset members, which is not enough to form a government. The biggest problem that this election uh, result uh, had, compares to the one from a few months ago, is that a few months ago he had 35 to 36 seats, and he was not, he was the biggest. Now he's second. Mm -hmm. He's not mm -hmm. first. So he does not enjoy neither the size of his party nor the size of his coalition. Right. And that brings him to the table of negotiations uh, with a great disadvantage. And the other side, their one, one condition to even partner with the Likud party is if they kick Netanyahu out. Oh, That's their, okay. their number one yeah. thing. And so the hatred towards Netanyahu blinded them from seeing the, 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 the favor and the good and, 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 and of, of the interest of the nation. Right. And the one that is behind this is the media and some very powerful people from outside. The same people that hates President Donald Trump, hates Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm. Netanyahu for them stands against globalism. That's Netanyahu right. for them. That's Netanyahu right. for them is standing against um, all the, you know, the things that you see that President Trump stands for. That's why they became such good friends, because they share the same values. Right. And I want to tell you something, folks. The Israelis were affected, infected, and poisoned by our own media. That's why, by the way, everyone wants to control the media, because that's the best way to control right. the minds yes. of the people. Right. Satan is known as the prince of the air. And I want you to know that in that case, the media, for the longest time, tried it. They try to stick on him some allegation. Let's see what will stay. And I mean, mm -hmm. most of it fell off, but they they did it long enough. And you know, when you lie repeatedly, it becomes the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. Hitler said that. That's you right. say, repeat that lie enough time. That's it. It's the truth. And now the people don't even ask anymore if it's true or not. They accept it's the truth. They accept he's corrupted. Therefore, he needs to be out. And in the last. 48 hours, all of the people that I've been watching uh, online that I'm affiliated with, no one talks about Netanyahu as prime minister. It's Everybody talks about how can he walk <laughs> away from this without mm. trial. So what happens next with the new leadership? Now, look, the, the, <coughs> unfortunately, on the other side, there's a weak, very weak, very um, uneducated, I would say incapable person to run this country and I can tell you that the enemy knows that yeah. mm -hmm. they smell the blood already and they are not going to wait for too long yeah. and so I wrote it in you know on, on yesterday on Facebook I wrote it as much as I am sad as an Israeli I'm excited as a believer and as much as I am uh, sad uh, for Netanyahu I know that um, you know, Bible prophecy, biblically it's inevitable. Israel yes. will be attacked. And so it could have not happened when a strong, decisive prime minister is in power. It will happen when a weak one is. Right. Mm. And uh, it, it, it will happen sooner than we think. Right. And it's hard for us as conservatives <coughs> to even entertain ourselves with the thought that some lunatic liberal is going to run the country. Yes. But I said to people, I feel today what Americans felt when Obama yeah. became president and then when he was re-elected. They were so bummed and they were so they thought it's the end of this country, which almost yeah. was the truth. Right. God by his grace allowed you four good years and and uh, again, I'm afraid and I hope and I pray that it won't happen to the United States. Mm -hmm. They will not grow fat and what we call kick. Right. And and um yeah. Now, do you see this connecting in some ways with what Ezekiel 38 talks about, where there will be a time where Israel has a sense of <coughs> peace going about it and uh, forms 
a, a period of peace, and yet other nations come and attack against it with God ultimately yeah. intervening. You know that the last 10 years were the most peaceful years of Israel's history. Mm. And I know that it makes no sense uh, for people who read and watch the news, but those rockets from Gaza are nothing. I'm going to tell you something. Every, almost every Friday we have one. Most of the countries never heard of it. And those that hear about it understand it's, it happens, but it, listen, when you take that compares to the years, that, uh, the days that Israelis woke up in the morning not knowing if they will last that day, mm. those were the years of the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. So when wars like 1967, later on 1973, took place, no one in the country knew if we were even going to make it. Mm. That's why Golda Meir called Richard Nixon yeah. and said, Mr. President, if you are not going to yeah. help us, we're not going to make it. Mm. No, no prime minister today is going to have to make a phone call to the White House and say, within 48 hours, we're not going to be there. Right. In fact, within 48 hours, all of our neighbors cannot be there <laughs> with right. what we have today. It has changed. See, yes. Things have changed dramatically. Israel from a country that... Had, was a great in debt and yes. in inflation and unemployment. We have the lowest unemployment in our history right now. Amazing. The strongest currency ever. We have unbelievable innovation, unbelievable technology, unbelievable. Look, so we are in a great shape. And that is why the Israelis got so yes. yeah. spoiled and now they kick. And you know what? I'm. Well, that. you know, Great Britain made this kind of same mistake with uh, Winston Churchill. Correct. I mean, he 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 allowed them to win, uh, be victorious in World War II, and they voted him out. Yes. I mean, it makes no sense in common terms. It makes no sense. So, um, it's it's hard. To, but you know, God has a plan in all of it this. Is. Yes. And I believe the plan involves some angle of eschatology, mm -hmm. whether it be this weakens Israel. Um, She's invaded now because she doesn't have strong leadership. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think we know where it's going quite yet. We, but we, we don't. But yeah, I don't think we won't be surprised, is. though. But he won't be, that's all, yeah, we, we won't be surprised. And, and perhaps this is setting the stage. Yeah, so that's a good way to put it. I know a lot of people watching have been excited about all that they've heard. But in terms of application and what they should be doing with this information, speak a little bit, Jan, if you would, about how you hope people will take this information from the conference and use it where they live in their everyday lives. What, what would you recommend? Well, the Bible says we're to be ready for, to give every man an answer, an answer to why we believe what we believe. I believe you can extend that, an answer to what in the world is going on. Yes. Let's give the world an answer. I have a friend, I may even talk about it in my message, who said to me the other day, I'm done. I'm done talking about how excited I am that the Lord is coming back soon. I'm, I've, I've said it over and over again. They're not interested. Mm -hmm. I, I quit. No, we can't quit. It's the only good news out there. I'm with J.D. Farag. If, if it weren't for the hope of the any minute pre-tribulation rapture of the church, I would go out of my mind. Mm -hmm. I can't look at headlines anymore. I'm going to show some pictures this afternoon of, of little children drag queens, 10, 12-year-old drag I can't look at that unless I know Jesus could, back to, come, yes. could come back today and put an end to all of this. And unless you know that God said that's going to happen. Yes, yes he yes, predicted it would happen. You know, we're to we're intervene, sad yes. to see the things that God told us that are going to happen. But in fact, when he allows us to see it, we should actually be stronger in our faith to understand that what's coming next is as serious as what yeah. is happening right now. So yeah, it's sickening, I mean, to what yes. we see today. But that little hope that we have is that if that's true, how much more what's coming next yes. is true. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, and I think you know, in Noah's day, God saw the world and he said, enough and and he put an end and, and I think he's he's seeing some of the debauchery today and he's going to say enough yes. I'm sending my son we're putting an end to this first comes the rapture of the church terrible tribulation and then the, the, the thousand year reign and so if we can look through things look at things through the prophetic lens I think it's it's our only hope that's why the church it's got to come through or else 
we've got to multiply him ten times over. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's a great way to put it. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. We have just a few moments left. So I want to turn it over to Joe. You have a presentation you wanted to share, I think, before we, we talked up a lot today. about Watchmen, and we invited Amir as part of this, partly for that reason, because nobody talks about Watchmen more than the two of you. And in respect to what's been accomplished in a relatively short period of time with these conferences, with the ministries that you all share, we wanted to honor what Jan has done and what you've poured into the lives of people that we refer to as watchmen around the world. Mm -hmm. Our ministry sprang out of that terminology and we use that nomenclature in our radio show and we wanted to recognize someone who recognizes the watchman, a watchman of the watchman. And we did that in a practical way, and we asked Amir to be part of it, and he actually provided the image of the Tower of David for us to have put onto this award, and we call it the Watchman's Lifetime Service Award. It's not an award in the sense that you've done this great big thing. This is merely a recognition of someone who has poured into so many other people, and a way for us to sow seeds into those watchmen, watchmen and women who are watching right now, and recognize you for the contribution that you've made. Thank you. Yes. I'm so touched. This I, is yours. Thank you so much. Um, <coughs> life verse church. from Nehemiah, yes. I believe, chapter 4. Right. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Ooh. Beautiful. It's just beautiful. My goodness, thank you. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. No. Yeah, so this was supposed was to be very, a surprise. Was that was the plan. to keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, so we know for those of you watching, if you want to recognize Jan and her ministry in any way, please go to her website, send her a message, just to encourage her for the work she's done in this conference and in her ministry, and just thank her for the service award as well. We're going to wrap up in just a minute or two, and to close, I'm going to ask Amir just to pray a blessing over Jan and the rest of our conference, as well as those of you who are watching with us yes. around the world today, if you would, Amir. Yes. So, Father, we thank you so much for what you've been doing in us, with us, and through us in these last days. And, Father, what a privilege it is to serve you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. But we know that the truth is in your word. And unless we are in your word, we will never be able to communicate that truth. And, Father, your word contains such a big portion of future events that you, by your grace, have allowed us to know and asked us to understand. And Father, we pray that you will continue your, uh, having your hand upon our sister Jan and this ministry, the Olive Tree Ministries, that is all around the world, giving hope to people, explaining to them, Father, uh, that which is written in the Word regarding what is happening in the world and what the Word of God says about it. And as it pertains to our hope, of the soon return of Jesus to take us out of this evil world to be with him so where he is we will also be and father I pray also for all the people that are now watching online and all the people that are present in this auditorium today that you will never bring them back home the same as they came in that you will inject so much uh, hope and so much encouragement and comfort them uh, as they are walking day to day with the, uh, the thought that they might be the only ones uh, uh, in that area that hold to uh, uh, those opinions and those uh, teachings of the uh, soon return of Christ to, re to take us out of here. And then, of course, the tribulation that will be so horrific mm -hmm. and us returning back at the very end to be with him for the thousand years millennial kingdom. Father, you said in your word that uh, if indeed we have been raised with Christ, then we need to seek those things which are above and uh, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. So Father, we don't want to uh, dwell only on the things on earth, but well, the hope that we have to come to be with you in heaven and to go through the, uh, and through the um, Lamb's uh, be my seat and to receive our reward and, and to go through the marriage uh, ceremony uh, up there in heaven and then return as the bride with his, her bridegroom on earth to reign with him for a thousand years. That's what a beautiful thing. All of these things you said, we must seek those things. We must look up for our redemption indeed is drawing near. And it is the redemption of our body from this evil world. So we 
thank you for your promises, for your word, for the encouragement that we find in it, and for people such as Jan that are standing. She's like a lioness. She's the Deborah of our time, standing strong and, uh, and, and unashamed of the gospel and, and relentlessly working to bring clarity and comfort to your people. We thank you and we bless you. And we ask all of this in the matchless and the most beautiful name of the hope of Israel, the hope of the world, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, in the name of Yeshua, our salvation, Jesus, we pray. Amen.